Okay, it just happens to be Saturday afternoon, February the 15th. Really? The middle of February? No, it's more than the middle. February is only 28 days. Oh, so it's slightly over uh -huh. halfway gone. It's halfway gone. February 15th, Saturday afternoon, uh, 2014. And uh, of course, big snowstorm. Of course, we had another yeah. big snowstorm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What else is new? I'm, I've been shoveling twice a week. Well, there's <laughs> more coming. I know, I four. heard. It's going to be light, though, right? Two to four inches. I don't call that light. Well, it's better than the. Especially uh, on top of 11. What, what was the last one? About 11. It was. We got 11, right? About that. I know. I Somebody did. measured over 12. I thought it was even right more. up the street. Well, it depends where you are. Mm -hmm. If you're living up in Sussex County in the mountains, then you got eleven and a half, twelve. Yes. Yeah, I mean, uh, I know my lower back feels it. <laughs> I, I I shoveled. Uh, well, of course, I did a video of it. It's on the internet. So. Well, who the hell was holding a can? No, I didn't. I didn't video my shoveling. I oh. videoed the uh, the, the day shot when the snow was coming down heavy, and then I did the aftermath at night. Uh, to, to show where it how, turns how, to ice. To show in particular how our lovely uh, uh, Lodi, Bergen County, Lodi, New Jersey Department of Public Works, what they do every year, they plow the center of the roads and they do not plow the sides to restore parking spaces. What and, about the uh, and the know, and the snow on the side is getting higher and higher. It's getting mountainous. But what about alternate street parking? They're supposed to do that side that there's nobody on. When the people leave, when they get their cars out, uh -huh. there's no cars. Right. So it only makes sense instead go of them to the curb. instead of them cruising around, you go to the curb and you plow the side where there's no cars parked. And then they all go over to the other side, and then you do the other side sometime. Duh. It's but you know it's like a crony job you know and they're cruising around and they're not plowing the side so what's mm -hmm. happening people have to put their plastic chairs parking cones garbage cans to protect their spot to yeah. protect their spot because granted they busted their ass to dig their car out I know how it feels so I, I you know they don't have any choice because there's no parking but the town is not plowing the sides No. So, Hall of Shame, first inductee into our Chiseless Hall of Shame, the Lodi, New Jersey, Bergen County Department of Public Works. Shame on you, you crony bastards. <laughs> now, uh, blah, blah, blah. oh, I'm sorry. Let me formally introduce the show and ourselves, of course. Welcome to Progressive Discussions. I'm your host, James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, and I will now formally uh, pipe, a, pipe aboard my uh, illustrious co host and mentor, and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977 with my authentic bosun's whistle. Welcome aboard this son of a bitch furnace had to make its noise while I was blowing the bosun's whistle. So I hope you people heard my bosun's whistle. Welcome oh aboard. Boy, they heard it. Arr, welcome aboard our progressive liberal starship censored, the one and only the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week? Make it so. Are oh, you want me to do it again? No, make it so. Oh, make it so. I don't, I don't, Picard. I, I can't, as, Picard. listen, as much as Picard is a great actor, um, I mean, um, Patrick Stewart, as much as he is a great actor and character actor, very versatile uh, actor, I, I can't see him as the real captain of the Starship Enterprise, but I assume, I mean, Kirk can't live forever. He's not the new captain of the. He's the new generation. Star Trek: The New Generation, because because Kirk was retired. Kirk is dead. 
Wait, wait. Kirk met his Ultima Rune. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you trying to tell me... Are you trying to tell me that the series Star Trek The New Generation, uh, when, when that took place, Kirk is deceased? That's the assumption. No, he's retired. The assumption is that those days are gone. He's retired. In fact... Wasn't there an episode where Kirk and Picard met? I don't know. Yeah, I, I think know. there was. The thing of it is, if I'm correct, generation takes place maybe several generations after Kirk and his Star Trek. So he ain't around. Whatever happened. We may, we, we never know. So we they know. had they supposedly had more advancements uh, in, what about in technology Enterprise with Bacula. I mean that was even before Kirk. Why the supposedly. fuck why would any actor go under the last name of Bacula? You know, I don't. I like the Remember days. The I like the days when actors and actresses had nice sounding stage names instead of using their ethnic names. Remember the movie? Bacula? Blackula. Oh, Bart. Yes, I do. Ba was that in the seventies? Was the the, uh, the black vampire, the black Dracula? Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. I also remember Jane Kennedy, the lovely Jane Kennedy, back in the day. Uh, so, careful putting stuff on there. Well, it's okay. Going to R.A. Cave. Hold on for a second. You know what? I like caves. I, they're very gothic and cozy. It's going to cave, man. What do you want me to do with this? Put them on the garbage can. Hey. Uh, actually, that might be easier for me. Well, uh -huh. where's your tea? It's on the end. Or over oh, there. there. It is. Okay. It's over there. All right. Oh, oh, all these interruptions. Interruptions. Well, um. I'm happy that uh, the Progressive Discussions um, Facebook group is doing quite quite well. It's growing very rapidly, just like Holistic Health Talk, and uh, there's a lot of activity on it. It's, it's non-stop, like Grand Central Station. How come I don't see it all? Is it going on the profile pages or what? should be on your wall. I know, but I don't see in. it all because sometimes somebody will say something like you said something last yesterday referring to something else which was not on the wall well she said or something there is so much being said that it totally oh, um, oh, surpasses what I ever say I, I, I make a comment every now and then and I make a post every now and then but there's so much activity that I'm the minority of that crew well, I believe you and Judy Canova there was yeah saying something about something that yeah. was not on my, my wall and I couldn't understand, you know, what it was about. So I was very disturbed. Yeah, no, well, uh, most of most of the information on the group is, is very uh, intelligent and easy to understand, except for some people. Uh, uh -huh. You know, in most part, they're pretty straightforward. Um, but I'm, I'm happy that the uh, the numbers are growing. I mean, we're closing in on, uh, I'd say, 800 members, which is pretty damn good. Not as good as Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber. Or Coocher. What is, what's that guy, Coochie? You know, oh, uh, Aston, Aston Coochie. Coochie, yeah. Let me tell you something. I'm glad you brought that up. You know, it shows you where... Americans' minds are at, especially younger generation. Anything that has to do with entertainment, even a little skinny little wussy um, pipsqueak like Justin Bieber. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, Mad Seed Justin Bieber. You know, and he just. I've heard people. I've heard people on like American Idol sing better than him. You know, he, you know, he's not, he's nothing special, but you know, Ellen, he's uh, generous. Yeah, she's uh, she's very annoying. Supported him. She, uh, her dancing is annoying, and uh, and and her her dressing like a man is very annoying to me. But she supported she discovered him. him. Yeah. Somebody spotted him on YouTube, and Ellen Degenerate uh, uh, discovered Justin Bieber and um, boosted his career. You know. But there are a lot of people who are not what you would call exceptional, real talents. 
that have just been at the right place at the right time and they knew the right people who took a liking to them and they got discovered. Not everybody in the spotlight is the, ver the most talented or the most attractive around in existence. There's you know, a lot of incompetence that are successful today. Speaking about... Because of office politics. Numbers and etc. Yeah. Lana Del Rey right. and her song Born to Die Born to Be Alive that was a disco song has over 139 million hits. Now do you see how Americans are she has that many hits but, yes, but a real educational name. high quality hard-hitting show like ours should have a trillion hits but she's not mainstream and she's not mainstream yet correct oh my is she good though absolutely good but she, she's a bad seed could she hold the note are you kidding oh uh, yeah kid, kids are very very uh, attracted to rebellious people but she's a real bad thank god i don't have kids. at least it's according to the videos and etc i don't know if it's real life but you know well miley cyrus is off the deep end maybe she, that's why she rebelled against her father for some reason this is uh maybe this is what is uh, selling these days you think it might be an act with miley you know going to, you like think with uh with lana you think you go think, with a bunch of hell's angels on you, motorcycles and Fucking each one, you and think, it's that uh, way, you know. And you, th you think when born she born to die? You think when she put uh, the Hannah Montana in, in the uh, in the proverbial casket and left Disney? You think she had a big meeting she with had to some? Remake herself. You think she had a big meeting with some big shots, and she had, and they and they suggested that she remake herself? Absolutely. And they suggested that sex sells. You know, and being you, acting like a slut and 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 getting naked will 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 make you a ton of money. What the hell was the name? Of or that? do you think she's really a slut and a pig? No, I think it's uh, it's uh, manufactured. Manufactured. What was that show with the um, the guys and the two young twins? The uh, what's my call twins? Oh, uh, 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 John Stamos. Yeah, John Stamos uh, and the uh, other guy. Uh, what is it? Something House. And oh, uh, uh, Bob Saget, Bob, Bob Saget, Saget, John yes, Stamos, yes, yes. and the other guy, and uh, and the other guy, <laughs> and and the Olsen twins, the Olsen twins, yes, yes, yes. Okay, but it, and the girlfriend the of John Stamos. Huh? Those twins are worth one hundred million dollars. What do they do? I have no idea. What? I haven't seen them in years. They're redheads, right? I don't know what they what are. What do they do? But they're worth a hundred million. I wonder if John Stamos. Uh, when they became 18, if John Stamos banged them, the Olsen twins. I do not think so. He went to work for that uh, yogurt, Greek yogurt. Place. Yeah, Greek Which yogurt. Which means... He looks good for his age. I mean, he, he, he still... When looking guy. these people do commercials, it means they're not doing too well in their commercial life. Well, you haven't really seen John Stamos right. in that many movies and I mean no he he's not out he's not out of the spotlight completely no but he's not look he's not working regularly I think okay. that John Stamos can play serious drama roles yeah I think they could uh, switch him from comedy to very easily to be a leading leading Absolutely. man I think he's leading. better I think he's better looking than um that short pipsqueak that that my mother likes. Um, uh oh. Oh, what the hell? Short pipsqueak. Yeah, he's very short. Uh, actor. He's popular. Oh, Don Cruz. Yeah, Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. Yeah, he, oh, he's he's better. Stamos is has Cruise beat, and Johnny Depp has Cruise beat. You know. I don't know what anybody sees in Johnny Depp. I'm telling you. Well, why do they put? Why the do they? The girls see it, but I don't know what the well, hell. It why is. do they give? Uh, Tom Cruise, these macho man, Top Gun, yeah, leading man roles where the guy is supposed to have physical attributes in the movie, and here's this short little twer yeah, uh, He does some of his own stunts. Twerpy guy. He does some of his own. Uh, stunts. Jackie Chan does it too, but Jackie yeah, Chan wants to do comedy. Trained. He's strange. This is very um, um, aggravating. 
No, <laughs> this is very unique to progressive discussions because we usually don't go into depth with uh, entertainment. Entertainment, so to No, speak. We, we don't. Um, I was talking to uh, my friend there, uh, former re pro wrestler and promoter, um, Mike uh, Rebel Carmen uh, from Ohio, and he was uh, the, the man who was going to be raising uh, very high quality, top notch German Shepherds on his new. Uh, uh, he mentioned breeding. some wrestlers last night from the Miami area. In, yeah, in response I, I, to you put up some older wrestler thingy. I, I, I did not. It did not ring a bell to me. Um, the name of the wrestler, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're talking because uh, he, he's an administrator on the uh, Progressive Discussions uh, group, and 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 uh, I'm proud to have him. Uh, um, you know, including uh, Sash Boyle. Um, you know, we were discussing uh, many things and. Uh, I told him I would like to start doing a pro wrestling talk again because I think it's uh, totally despicable just like it's despicable how retail and fast food workers are treated it's despicable how people in pro wrestling you know have to pay for their own uh, health care if they get injured which they do a lot they have to pay for their own transportation and hotel accommodations and what the fuck? What is this crap? The the promoters rake in all the profits and 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 hog it all and stiff people for money and there's so much office politics in pro wrestling. I think more so than corp corporate America. More so than corporate America. And it's just a sleazy uh uh, business with a lot of sycophants. It's a hallmark of the, the whole capitalist system. Sycophants. I mean, that's, that's how it works. Siphon those profits upward it's, and they'll produce jobs. It's not far, It's not too far from typical corporate America and, the, and their that's attitude. That's what they do. They've well, been doing that for over 30 years. Well, when, when Linda McMahon, Linda Lunchbox McMahon, was running for, I think, state senate in, uh, in in Connecticut, and I I could see why she was running as a Republican in Connecticut. The main headquarters for the WWE is in Stamford, Connecticut. <laughs> Therefore, do you detect a smell of something going on? Therefore, it is a really good chance that maybe uh, Vince and uh, Linda McMahon reside in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and uh, ipso facto ergo, I feel that uh, Linda McMahon ran because if she became Connecticut State Senator, she could cut the taxes on, on, on the rich, so Vince McMahon will be paying much, much less income taxes. And making more profit. And increasing his, his bottom line. and. It, like somebody asked me the other day, how much money is enough for these people? There's never enough. When it comes to greed. Correct. Which is idolatry. Which is a disease. The love of money. A disease. Now the lack of money can also create evil and crime just like the obsession and the love of money. Because we live in a society where usury, interest, and these things are part of it. You mean it's not part of God's economics. You mean they're ver they have become virtues. Well, not that that they're virtues. This is how the money works. But under God's economics in yeah. the millennium, standards will never change. Well, you're talking about if you have a thirty-five dollar an ounce gold standard, it won't change. Nobody will ever. Get, nobody will get price gouged anymore. Screwed over. Or people will not make money on the backs of other people. What about what about astronomical interest rates? There won't be any. There That's won't what be I any. just say. But but the Standards world will never change. The world, the material world, is Satan's world. But that won't be at that time. Satan will be put away for a thousand years. So what you're saying is a person So that only God's rules and yep. regulations are so, known. What you're saying is an individual who 
it, it, who's really upset because they can't afford a Lamborghini, a Ferrari, or a BMW, this person would be a little too much in the world, would you say? Those attitudes will not be tolerated at that Well, time. I asked you a question. This person is part of the world. I'm talking about the millennium now. I'm not talking about the now. I'm talking about people that are worldly and not spiritual. They care about not having a Ferrari or a Lamborghini. Yeah, but that's now. Yes. In the millennium, it will not be so. The devil will be put away for a thousand years. He has no influence. The only influence will be God's rules and regulations. Right. And, as Isaiah says, I believe it's Isaiah, uh, the, uh, the rest of the world will say, let us go up to Jerusalem and learn the, the Lord's ways. You see? The education at that time will only be coming from God. Right. The 144,000 elect are the only ones that God is, is uh, interested in right now. Well, yes, but what does that have to do with the millennium? They will be in their rulership, <coughs> in the throne with Jesus at that time. I'm talking about post, uh, post um, uh, resurrection. Post the tribulation. Post tribulation. Post the end time, etc., etc. Yeah. So while post these, the day of the Lord. Well, these uh, zealot, uh, right wing, born again evangelicals seem to think that they're going to be raptured up in the sky. Yeah. And that they're going to avoid the tribulation. I think they'll be a little um, perturbed. Disappointed? Yeah. When that does yeah. not occur. Okay? It's just an example of what happened now through, the, through history. Where people have devoted their lives to Zeus and Thor and Loki. Well, don't pick on, the, all don't the, pick uh, on the Vikings you know, too much. There, there are other people that geez. have there are other people that have pagan gods. Jupiter and the, Mercury and and and, and Adonis uh, and it's everyone. The Vikings were kind of cool. They're pretty cool people. They were very cruel. Cool, I said. Well, they because they lived in ice, but they were cruel. Well, they. they uh, were cruel that's people. funny. Wait a minute. The Vikings were cool dudes because they lived. In ice, meaning yeah. Scandinavia. Yeah. Scandinavia. The levity bells. Well, um, you know, I mean, they were pirates when you think about it. Uh, and well, they and just wanted to get rich, and just pi like uh, profits of the the, the corporation. Well, no, pi piracy was yeah. actually. A very good revolt in those times because mm -hmm. of the uh, the greed and the evils of the uh, of the uh, 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 the monarchies, the the kingdoms. It was one of the ways to get rich. The king, the kingdoms, okay. the king owned everything. That's correct. And the people owned a little patch, a little a little um, piece of ground where they where they where they lived. Well, that, they didn't own it. They did not own it. They didn't own their little cottage. Not under feudalism. Feudalism means the king owns it and you work it. You surf you. Okay? They had surfboards back then? Yes, they did. Surf them. I know, I'm only kidding. Joking around. But anyway, let us. Uh, well, nothing has really changed. Now they want a corporate plutocracy. Back then you had uh, uh, imperialism. You know, I mean, what has really change and you know and there's people who they'll they'll demonize Karl Marx they'll, they'll they'll take Karl Marx socialism communism uh, they'll roll it up in, in, into one category and they'll throw all these words at you not realizing that the Soviet Union corrupted Karl Marx's original uh, socialism which was very fair uh, which was very fair until the Soviets turned it into a totalitarian system. Well, you need to say that these things are fair. There's, there's a, we have a conflict. Oh, the original Marx, Marxism. We have a conflict. There's always been a conflict between those that have and those who don't have. Always been. Marxism, communism, socialism, as. Um, 
state ways of dealing with politics uncorrupted was focused on the little guy it, whereas plutocracy fascism etc is focused on those who have that's the difference so you need not have to uh, support Marxism socialism etc you just understand and that there are two ways yeah. of governing yeah, it's just that socialism bo be, uh, promoted sharing of the natural resources and the wealth of the country. Now, some of these idiots, they'll throw the word fascism in with communism. They don't know a damn thing about what they're talking about, people yeah. online. Well, they do not understand that the corporations married to the government is fascism. They have to go back to Mr. Mussolini. And listen to Mussolini's a definition of fascism. Right. Okay? Their idea of the Soviet Union was totalitarianism. And they believe that socialism and Marxism Automatically. and communism, they all end up as totalitarianism. Well, if human beings get a hold of anything, eventually they corrupt it. But where don't they understand? that the corporation married to the state is also totalitarianism. That's true, it's fascism. Okay. So anything you do for the wealthy is going to end up as totalitarianism. Siphon up. I, you know, some people say, are using the term trickle up. You cannot tr really trickle up. You can't push a rope up a hill. No, you, you, it's siphon up economics to the 1%, not trickle up. Trickle down never really happened because it trickled down and then it got funneled off away somewhere, back upward, and whatever the people got was drip, drip, drip. Maybe they didn't get anything. Or nothing. Okay. But why or should they, why should that theory have been accepted? It was only accepted because of what we were talking about before. That the poor and the middle class and etc. they have this guilt trip. The guilt trip. That's been instilled in Anybody them. who gets any help from the government has been made to feel guilty by those assholes on Fox News and the Republican Party. That even the disabled were made to feel guilty for uh, being on the dole. Uh, and they but, don't need the dole. But what about corporate welfare? That's the dole. That's okay. Because they're the job producers. Again with the job producers. Well, it's been working. Sure. In, in, in the Philippines, in Bangladesh, yeah. in mainland China. Oh yeah, the job producers are doing well. But obviously... And not paying taxes. They accept that because it's still in effect. The middle class For over thirty some years have become accepting and complacent about carrying the tax burden. You would think they would be protesting and they ah. would be up in arms. Protesting. You see what they did with Occupy Wall Street? They deballed them. The people are pussies. They they, it's they not the people. They need hundreds of thousands of angry people that are prepared, well prepared and well trained. Why do not you not you and not the anti the why? extreme left wing not the extreme left wing anti gun people that feel why? that Americans should not be armed. God why? given I mean a uh, constitutional right to bear arms. Why do they need that when the corporations and the wealthy can just walk into the Congress's uh, the congressman's office or the senator's office? Hand them a couple of bills and get their laws in you effect. Mean, their Why do we need to be out in the street protesting? If you voted, if people voted in those so-called leaders, and those so-called leaders are on the take, taking the big bribes, stab you in the back. St stab the voter in the back. They sell you out. Even a lot of Democrats are selling out their voters. A lot of Democrats, like uh, Al Franken, for one second inductee into the Chisholm's Hall of Shame. He sold out not only... To the sugar industry. The sugar industry. He sold out to the sugar industry, which is the, the number one, next to Monsanto, the number one poison industry. 
Uh, and uh, it's not just Al Franken, the senator from Minnesota. It's Al Franken, the uh, syndicated talk show host on Air America, and the writer of books, you know, uh, I guess best-selling, author of books, whatever. Uh, it's that Al Franken that totally turned his back on uh, what he believed in for the big mamu. And also, it's like what the, the very pretty uh, Asian girl from Hawaii, was it Michelle um, uh, Malkin? Ayat? Senator Ayat? Malkin. 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 Uh, she, uh, she's she, she, she's a, a Philippine, most likely from poor Filipinos in the Philippines, because Philippines is a poor third world country. And she totally turned her back on the poor Philippines, which is most of them, uh, to embrace conservatism, capitalism, Republican Party. And now, now she's like, uh, she's a Republican from a, 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 a culture that is very low income. But she made hers, that's why. She made hers and she don't give a shit about theirs. There is this saying. Her, her heritage, her people. as a young man, one is liberal, but once one gets mula, one becomes conservative overnight. You're uh, you're young, you're idealistic, and you're you're liberal. Yep. You grow up. You, are you talking about a lot of the uh, flower children, hippies of the '60s, who got older and, and went to work on Wall Street, and went to work on Wall Street, and suddenly gave up their liberalism. But you see, the problem is human nature, that if people are that weak, you know, their moral fiber is that weak, then it's human nature, the sinful, uh, natural sinfulness of human nature that uh, is very corruptible. Well, it's the way the system is set up. The system's bad. The system is set up, like I say, constantly. If you need a corporation to give you a job so that you can survive, this is wrong. And you can't produce your own work and own your own occupation, you know, and, 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 and yeah, it is wrong. It is yeah. wrong. Well, Jesse Ventura, That's the setup. Jesse Ventura says, hey, you want to keep on voting for Republicans and Democrats? This is what you get in the two-party system. You know, well, anyway, let us sink our teeth into these readings. Before we do so, how are we doing on time? Out there. Yeah, I'll, gonna, I'll, 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 I'll see if one of the cats wants to come in. <laughs> Alright, you, you begin and I'll check for cats. The incessant chant of Republicans is that Republican presidents are better for the economy. Actually, Democrats have produced superior results. Bob Derrick, a principal at Polaris Financial Partners in Westerville, Ohio, crunched 80 years of numbers. He looked at the years between 1929 and 2009. During this time, 40 years were under Republican presidents and 40 were under Democrats. Huh. Derek was politically neutral until the start of the George W. Bush era. That's when he saw massive mismanagement of the economy at the expense of his middle to upper middle class clients. He is a disciple of a rich Republican banker, Mariner Eccles, who held that putting more money in middle class hands is key to recovery and that trickle down economics helps mainly those providing the trickle. Yeah, or the pistol. pissing down. The results during 80 years blew Republicans out of the water in comparison. 
He calculated that if you invested $100,000 in 1929, it would have grown to 126000 under Republicans. Under Democrats, it would have grown to $3.9 million. Adjusted for inflation. Regarding income inequality, the gap between the top 1% and the bottom 99% widened 20% during the 40 years of Republican control. The gap narrowed 16% during Democratic years. Because President Obama was in office, for only three years at the time of his investigation, Derek left Obama out of his study. Bob Derek got enough of an Obama track record to declare in a recent Forbes interview, by all measures, Obama has outperformed every modern president. Sure. Well, what what other modern president has uh, the ha only one has created Obamacare, where 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 multitudes of low income people now have complete health insurance yeah, that they did not have before? Forget about that. The only other. Let me president. forget about that. They can go to the dentist that. now. Obamacare is not. We're talking economy. Here. Oh, okay. Economy. Well, to the poor. Having complete health care subsidized by the government is a big thing. It's a big thing. It's a big thing. It's a big thing. Not from private corporations. Who cares what they think? I don't give I'm a shit. I'm not going to kowtow to the corporations. I said they're getting their insurance from private corporations. What's the difference? We're supposed to have a single payer. That's correct. Public option. Government pay. Uh, public, yeah, you're right. You're okay. right. Public option. So, you know, it, it's not so great. In that sense. Well, he compromised. No kidding. Well, you know what compromise in that sense leads to? When you're uh, compromising up, with money. Up the ass with no lubrication. All right. Judging by the performance of my own investments, I am inclined to agree. Now, the only other president that had a surplus was President Dwight D. Eisenhower. Really? He and was, that's in the 50s. He was the last good good guy Republican. That's right, because he was not as a Republican is today. Yeah, totally corrupt and, yeah. and on the take. Yeah. <clears throat> well, um, yeah, we're supposed to, we were supposed to have a single-payer public option and, uh, and because uh, Democrats today are so obsessed with getting Republicans to like them and approve of them, and all this bipartisanship. And getting money from corporations. All this bipartisanship compromising is crap because people did not vote for a Democrat to compromise with the enemy, with the Republicans. That's not why people vote for Democrats. And what do they do? Even Nancy Pelosi, uh, every other word coming out of her mouth when she was in bipartisanship, bipartisanship. I'm not interested in compromising with the bad devil. with the devil with bad people because they won't compromise with you. No, they won't. If you're good and you're a progressive liberal and you're a hell of a nice guy mm. and you try to compromise with the devil, which is the, the Republicans, they will refuse to compromise with you. So therefore, the compromising will never take place. So then. What you got to do is you have to compromise, not 50-50, but more in their favor, which is what Obama did because it's 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 privatized. It's you know you know companies like um, United Healthcare, uh, um, Horizon, uh, Horizon, Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Oh, they got to have both. Yeah. What about Blue Balls? That's what you get. And then you got to have your... Blue Cross, Blue Shield, Blue Balls. Sure. Okay. How many 
little boy blue. He didn't. He needed the money, like Andrew Dice Clay used to joke about. Little boy blue. He needed the money. But the point is, he he made it privatized to kiss ass and make nice nice with the Republicans. But they never. Yeah, but he didn't have to because the only six Republicans voted for the bill. That was not the motivation. The motivation was to keep things in the private sector. Which means that many, many Democrats in the spotlight are just as much corporatists That's correct. as the Republicans. And therefore, they, we will, as I said, there are two different things that have friction against each other. You do something for the rich up here, these aren't going to like it. You do something for these down there, these aren't going to like it. No, there's the, always this friction. There's always but there is one way to govern in a democracy, and that's for the people. The people are supposed to be in charge. That's correct. The people are not getting involved in America. The people do not have a backbone like this Blackthorn shillelagh. They don't. They're soft. Well, maybe they, the voting is under 50% always. They're not voting. They're not going to town hall meetings. They're not flooding their senator and congressman's office with uh, emails and, and letters. They're not boycotting, which they should, the uh, products of the big corporations. These things are not being done. And they're not voting properly. No, we, we need to get everybody to the polls. Well, we need to be everybody. able to, to understand who these people are that we are voting for. The way that they go around the, the country now and kiss babies and etc. is bullshit. We learn nothing L about them listen to, listen. until they're in power. And then the Michelle Bachmans speak crap from their mouth. That's true. And the only way the American people can see what the Republicans and the Democrats really are is if it is insisted that independent candidates are part of the televised debates because the independents will show what the Republicans and the Democrats really are. Hopefully. Because they will be debating against the two-party system. Like example, if in 2016 you had um, the Republican nominate nomination nominee democratic nominee and you had let's say a jesse ventura all three at the televised debates i guarantee you you're going to see the real democrat and republican if somebody an independent like jesse is there to remind you all the crap that they've both pulled have been pulling for uh all these years decades and they won't be able to get away with their talking points instead of dealing with the true issues. Like the tax rate. What is the, what are, what, uh, under um, Obama... 39. The 39. Uh, under Eisenhower... 91. It was 91. Why uh, did Obama settle for 39 percent for the rich tax rate? Interesting. Because that's the one Clinton had, 39.6. Right, right. Okay. And, and 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 under Clinton was the uh, middle class still carrying the burden or not so? Well, well of course, the but the middle class have been and and the poor have been carrying the burden since Reagan. But, this is nothing but, new. But people like um, Clinton and Obama could have uh, altered that and and removed what Reagan. Well, it can always go up. Why do you think the real wealthy fear that? And the corporations. They fear rule by the people. I guess ah. it's I guess it's simply because there is money involved with politics in campaign contributions. And they owe them favors. Yeah. And we say that all the time. Yeah, but they don't call them what they are, bribes. It's a bribe. It's a bribe. Just like a subsidy is welfare for the rich. That's correct. <laughs> A bailout, a Wall Street bailout, is another 
fancy word for welfare that for the rich. That was a fancy way to siphon the money upward, baby. That's right, brother. Okay? All right. That's what the tarp was. That's what the goddamn bailout of Wall Street was. Yeah. It, it was it, theft. We never hear about bailing out Main Street. It's always Wall Street. Yeah, that's good. How are we doing on time? How many readings do we have before we'll lunch? Get, we'll get one more in. Before lunch, right? All yeah. right, go ahead. A drug given to pregnant mice prevented autism like behavior in their offspring. Yeah, I'm not a fan of drugs. Encouraging researchers there on the right track in testing the medicine in children with the disorder. The study published on Tuesday in journal Science supports the rationale for using the medicine called Bumatanide. Bumatanide. Cyanide? Bumatanide. 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 <laughs> the lead researcher, you think that's bad? Wait till you hear his name. Yahazkel. You know what? Ben Ari. Uh, these goofy names <laughs> represent a pharmaceutical which I have no interest in. Said in a telephone interview. Bumatanide was marketed by Roche, holding under the brand name Bumex. Yeah, that's easy to remember. As a treatment for water retention in people with congestive heart failure, and now is a generic drug. Yeah, eventually they all have, the, they all become available as a generic. And uh, not all, because. Some of them, they like to extend. Wait, man. They like to extend the patent years. Well, so they can make more moolah. Well, the great thing about the generic is if you go to, let's say, Walmart Pharmacy, it's $4 per refill, per prescription, which is not bad, really. You know, sometimes you got to go you gotta go with, with a pharmaceutical prescription drug prescription sometimes you just gotta go with it depending on your affliction uh, but there are natural ways to get off of most of them uh, all right continue so our congressmen and senators have decided to trim the federal budget on the backs of the working poor what else is the disabled children and the elderly by cutting eight billion dollars from the federal government food stamp assistance program. Ah, take the crumbs out of the mouth of poor children. Interesting. Nothing about taking welfare from the rich. Nothing about trimming the military, right? Yeah, let's not call them rich anymore. Let's Demons? Call them, well, let's just call them those who have. That's what the, tech, the tax system was set those. up to do. To take money from those who have, well, not uh, those who don't. The higher tax rate is supposed to start with people making $250,000 a year and up. Am I, am I correct? Something like that. So, I wouldn't call $250,000 a year rich, but they're... You would in 1929. Right, correct. Uh, but they still make enough money to be paying a high tax rate. They can afford it. They can afford to pay for their own health insurance, their own retirement, et cetera, et cetera. They don't, you know, need any uh, any. Well, they complain. Perks and frills. They complain like they're only making ten or fifteen thousand dollars a year. Oh, my heart bleeds for them. My heart bleeds for them. I think I think there's most small businesses don't rake in two hundred and fifty thousand a year. No, they don't. You know, so this was done with the recent passing in both chambers of the farm bill. It affects more than forty seven million people and equals a loss of twenty one meals a month or thirty six dollars a month mm -hmm. for a family of four who receive assistance from what is officially called the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, or SNAP. SNAP. Yeah. 
not the music. This According to the nonprofit charity agency feedingamerica.org. In the meantime, the Pentagon's budget for the fiscal year was $531 billion. While the $8 billion cut from the SNAP program is only less than 2% of the Pentagon's budget, and that is not counting the excess waste and mismanagement in the Defense Department, a much respected and well admired Republican once said, every gun that is made or warship that is launched, every rocket that is fired signifies in the final sense a theft from those who hunger and are not fed, those who are cold and are not clothed. Sure, His name was Dwight D. Eisenhower. Yes, a salute to Dwight D. Eisenhower, a, a memorial salute to him. He, uh, yes, and when you consider the price of a missile being fired or one plane, one uh, 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 extra plane that we don't need, that's a lot of money that can go to the poor. Well, eight billion dollars from five hundred and thirty-one billion dollars is nothing. Nothing, I say. But taking it out of the mouths of the poor, it's a, it's a hell of a lot. It's a hell of a lot. That's right. Okay, ready for lunch? Okay, we are going to cut out and on break. It's time for the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman's gastronomic delight known as lunch. And we will be back with promo, our commercial, followed by the continuation of the show, Progressive Discussions. Uh, it is the post St. Valentine's Day massacre on our wallets show. Because that's what happens to men. Yeah, well, uh, I wonder if a lot of businesses were open yesterday. I don't know with the snowstorm. Big storm. Hey, did you see the uh, what happened to the the real Saint Val Valentine's? Uh, how he was mar mar martyred brutally, and 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 the head on the bottom is uh, and you celebrate, you celebrate my martyrdom with chocolates and roses and greeting cards, mm -hmm. and he he was beheaded and he was beat before he was. Severely beaten before he was beheaded. Well, and usually the, martyred. Uh, the Catholic Church to make somebody a mod, uh, a, a saint, they usually have killed him. Yeah. They get killed to do. Yeah. And usually by the Catholic Church. Look like the king. Isn't it? You know what I mean? Yeah. This has been a Mega Life Twenty One production. Hi, this is William Morrow. Are you one of those people who join a health club, and after they have your big, overpriced annual membership, you notice that you're on your own with little or no results, even after all the promises? Then the website personal trainer is for you. Thank you very much, William H. Morrow III. So you lost another argument with a conservative, right-wing Republican. He talked over you. He screamed and yelled. He brought out the Bible. He thumped it. He quoted scripture to you. And you were lost because you came at him with facts. Nothing but facts. And you expected that that would, uh, that would make you look good. That would make you win the argument, but it didn't. You know why you lost the argument? You know why you're going to lose your next argument? Because you don't read censored. Censored, a 30-year-old newsletter that shows you how to defeat a conservative. Read censored. And you'll have all the ammunition you need. Every time you get into an argument with a right-wing conservative, uh, so-called Christian. Censored. That's all you need. Read it. And defeat a conservative. Greetings, listeners. Let me speak to you for a moment about the foundation of our entire organization. Newsletter Censored. It was founded by our mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, in 1977. 
It discusses the five taboos of American life, politics, religion, health, human sexuality, and child rearing. You won't find anything like this in the mainstream media and the press. It reveals the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? We are living in the end times, so in order to defeat a conservative and save America, you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com, click on the printable order form page, and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, the hardest hitting internet talk radio station on the planet. Hi, this is William Morrow. Are you one of those people who join a health club? And after they have your big overpriced annual membership, you notice that you're on your own with little or no results even after all the promises? Then the website personal trainer is for you. Thank you very much, William H. Morrow III. So you lost another argument with a conservative, right-wing Republican. He talked over you. He screamed and yelled. He brought out the Bible. He thumped it. He quoted scripture to you. And you were lost because you came at him with facts. Nothing but facts. And you expected that that would, uh, that would make you look good. That would make you win the argument, but it didn't. You know why you lost the argument? You know why you're going to lose your next argument? Because you don't read censored. Censored, a 30-year-old newsletter that shows you how to defeat a conservative. Read censored, and you'll have all the ammunition you need. Every time you get into an argument with a right-wing conservative, uh, so-called Christian. Censored, that's all you need. Read it, and defeat a conservative. Greetings, listeners. Let me speak to you for a moment about the foundation of our entire organization, Newsletter Censored. It was founded by our mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, in 1977. It discusses the five taboos of American life, politics, religion, health, human sexuality, and child rearing. You won't find anything like this in the mainstream media and the press. It reveals the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? We are living in the end times, so in order to defeat a conservative and save America, you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com, click on the printable order form page, and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, the hardest hitting internet talk radio station on the planet. Okay, we are back from promo and uh, what you heard on our commercial is absolutely correct. The very best way to join our organization and be a part of our organization is to get your, your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. This is how you join us. Now, we will continue with our show, Progressive Discussions, our post-St. Valentine's Day massacre on our wallets. And... Um, we will continue with the readings of this show. Uh, any any readings today uh, concerning Balloon Boy? Old Balloon Boy? Anything new? So I have no idea until I reach there. Oh, okay. Okay. Talking about Chris Christie. Well, other than raising money for the Republican Party, he's been quite quiet lately. Yeah, because he's nervous. He, he's he's worried. He's there's a lot of subpoenas, uh, documents, and subpoenaed people. Uh, uh, you know, it doesn't seem to me that these uh, politicians today worry, because they get a second chance. 
You know, David Letterman... Especially if you're a Republican. David Letterman told a very funny Chris Christie joke <laughs> last night. He says, uh, Chris Christie uh, eats his... When he orders pizza, he, uh, he usually gets a very large pizza, and he, uh, he puts the whole pizza in his mouth, and he lets it dissolve under his tongue. Some 18 inch pizza. Now, come on, you're being a little absurd here. Sub sublingually. 18 inch pizza in his mouth at yeah, one time. Yeah. I, I like the joke about him him t uh, acquiring a, a stolen New York City manhole cover and using it for a waffle iron. I, 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 prefer, <laughs> I prefer that joke much better. But you need two of those. Oh, you're right about that. <laughs> My grandmother used to make great waffles. She had an old-fashioned waffle iron. You know, you had to keep on brushing it with butter and, you know, to keep it from sticking. But uh, what, you, what you jabronis out there have to remember about making waffles is do not fill the waffle iron completely with batter. Because when you close it, it's Squeeze going it to out, squirt baby. out the sides. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you have to fill it maybe... Uh, Three quarters, maybe perhaps three quarters of the way. You know, just you got you got to judge by experience. But that's just a little tip for waffle making. Of course, I make my own batter from scratch, sourdough batter, whole grain. Anyway, let's sink our teeth into the readings. Since last year's revelations about the National Security Agency's massive communications data dragnets. The spy agency has been inundated with requests from Americans and others wanting to know if it has files on them. America, America. I'll talk like a like a teabagger. Hey, I'm a I'm, uh, redneck. Hey, America. No taking our jobs. America, America, America. All of them are being turned down. The denials illustrate the bind in which the disclosures have trapped the Obama administration. While it has pledged to provide greater transparency about the NSA's communications collections, the NSA says it cannot respond to individual requests without tipping off terrorists and other targets. What a bunch of bullshit. Uh, and that's not part of the article. That's me. Well, I listened to that very fascinating video, recent video by Jesse Ventura off the grid concerning uh, Mr. Edward Snowden. And Jesse Ventura says Edward Snowden is a hero. Am I Correct. Any, anybody who's a whistleblower is a hero. Correct. Because and to ask them to work through the system is just a bunch of bullshit. Yeah, and the Pentagon calls Snowden a traitor, and, uh, and, and in reality is, he was really working on the behalf of the American people. Ah, again, that friction, huh? Between the people and those in charge. The haves and the haves not. Correct. Nots. The yeah. haves versus the have-nots, yeah. This constant friction. Friction, yeah. In an apparent reaction to former NSA contractor Edward Snowden's revelations of the NSA's data collections, the number of open records requests filed with the agency tripled from 1,065 to 4,060 between 2010 and 2013, according to data supplied by the NSA. Should have been a hell of a lot more than 4,000. Mm. The denial rate during the same period skyrocketed from an estimated 33% to 82% because of the higher number of people seeking their own intelligence records. The NSA does approve other types of records requests, such as former workers seeking their employment records. The high rejection rate requests contrasts with Director of National Intelligence James R. Clapper. Clap on, clap off. His pledge. The clapper. <laughs> to lean in the direction of transparency wherever and whenever we can. Unquote. 
More bullshit. More bullshit ski. Unbelievable. Staying on the subject of Snowden. Early last year, Edward Snowden was secretly purloining classified documents from National Security Agents' computers in Hawaii. The NSA Director General Keith Alexander was gearing up to sell Congress and the public on a proposal for the NSA to defend private U.S. computer networks against cyber attacks. Alexander wanted to use the NSA's powerful tools to scan internet traffic for malicious software code. Ah, malicious. You know what that means? Not delicious, malicious. Yeah. It means innocent people. That's what it means. Fascism. He insisted the NSA could kill the viruses and other digital threats without reading consumers' private email, texts, and web searches. Oh, they want to find out where people are going. What if they do? What if they're watching a lot of free online porn? They are. They know. They that. know when you go there. They know when people go there and whack off, whack yeah. on, whack off, mm -hmm. wax on, wax off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh man. Oh yeah. Big well, Brother, they know everything. Like, Big Brother is so uh, sinless. <laughs> well, it's not a matter of them being sinless. It's a matter of them being in charge. They're peeping Tom. And they can do what they want. They want to be peeping Toms. Okay. The NSA normally protects military and other national security computer networks. Alexander also wanted authority to prevent hackers from penetrating U.S. banks, defense industries, telecommunication systems and other institutions to crash their networks or to steal intellectual property worth billions of dollars. Mm -hmm. But after Snowden began leaking NSA systems for spying in cyberspace last June, Ooh. Alexander's proposal was a political non-starter. Felled by distrust in his agency's fearsome surveillance powers, in the seesawing national debate over privacy and national security. It was one of several Obama administration initiatives in Congress and in diplomacy that experts say have been stopped cold or set back by the Snowden affair. As a result, United States officials have struggled to respond to the daily onslaught of attacks from Russia, China, and elsewhere. A vulnerability that U.S. intelligence agencies now rank as a greater threat to national security than terrorism itself. All the things the NSA wanted to do are now radioactive. Hmm. Even though they were good ideas, said James Lewis, a cybersecurity expert at the Center for Strategic and International Studies, a nonpartisan think tank in Washington, Snowden has slowed everything down. Senator Representative Mike Pompeo, Republican of Kansas, yeah. Pompey. Pompeo. Pompeo. He's a Republican, or well, hopefully, maybe a, a, an exploding volcano will cover Mr. Pompeo up as well. Like his namesake. Levity Bells. At town hall meetings in Wichita. Wichita Pompeo, lineman. Pompeo said, voters say, the NSA already is reading their emails, which it denies. And they aren't sympathetic to giving the agency more authority. The Obama administration has said it plans to release this year a list of voluntary best practices in cybersecurity for critical infrastructure, including the electric utilities and chemical plants, and the State Department's 
cyber coordinator. But President Obama's warning last summer to Chinese President Xi Jinping Ping? to halt what the U.S. officials describe as state-sponsored hacking of U.S. corporations mostly have gone unheeded. Wow. The official U.S. position that governments hacking governments for military and other official secrets is permissible, but governments hacking businesses for trade secrets is not. It's not good. It's a tougher sell these days. Yeah. Well, I know people that got their inventions stolen by corporations. Well, you know, like water and air. They don't belong to people. What? If, they belong if you, to corporations. If you're talking to the CEO of Nestle's, I guess they don't belong to anybody. No, they belong to the corporation. So what does that mean? The all the all the uh, the dinosaurs and prehistoric creatures that drank the Earth's water, they uh, they technically had no right. All the all living creatures have no right to drinking water, according to the CEOs. That is they correct. Got, you see, this is proof that CEOs have gotten way too powerful. That is correct. And I think they bought their power. That is correct. Leaked documents showing that the NSA spied on Brazil's largest energy, energy corporation, Petrobras, among other targets, have convinced many overseas that the U.S. government engages in significant espionage related to economic affairs. I got news for them, the NSA. I got news for them. Uh, like, Henry Kissinger, like Henry Kissinger said in an interview with David Frost many years ago, the United States has a lot less friends than they think. And for good reason. I'll leave it at that. We have, the United States has bought its lovers, the Bible says. We're not, we're not liked and respected, you know. Oh, uh, but when Obama came in office, he went around the world apologizing to all the nations. Well, you got, you have to apologize for for G. W. Bush and Dick Cheney. Oh, you have to because geez. they were they were like demons in control of the country. Um, you know, I mean, taking a perfectly good surplus from uh, Bill Clinton and totally turning it around wasn't. <laughs> That, well, that's a talk show in itself, but, um, you know, uh, I tell you, what this flag right here represents is nowhere near what it used to represent. And I should, I should just hang up my big Jolly Roger and not even have any of these flags in the back. Just hang up the pirate flag. I got a huge one, you know. Nearly three out of four children in the United States and young adults consume at least some caffeine. That's true. Mostly from soda, tea, and coffee. That's true. The rate didn't budge much over a decade. Hidden caffeine, too. Although soda use declined and energy drinks became an increasingly common source, a government analysis finds. Yeah, they should be getting their energy from eating fresh fruits and, and vegetables, you know, and uh, things that are healthy for them. Instead though, of energy drinks. Though even most preschoolers consume some caffeine-containing products, their average was the amount found in half a can of soda. And overall caffeine intake declined in children up to age 11 during the decade. The analysis is the first to examine recent national trends in caffeine intake among children, young adults, and comes amid the United States Food and Drug Administration investigation into the safety of caffeine-containing foods and drinks, especially for children. I believe caffeine is habit-forming. 
or, or, or if not, you, you acquire a dependency on the effects of caffeine. It's, it's not good for you. you know, um. In an online announcement about the investigation, the FDA notes that caffeine is found in a variety of foods, gum, and even some jelly beans and marshmallows. You're kidding me. Hidden caffeine, I was right. Like what I said before, hidden caffeine. The probe is partly in response to reports about hospitalizations and several deaths after consuming highly caffeinated drinks or energy shots. The drinks have not been proven to be a cause in those cases. The new analysis by researchers at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention shows that at least through 2010, <coughs> excuse me, energy drinks were an uncommon source of caffeine for most United States youth. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends against caffeine consumption for children and teens because of potentially harmful effects that from the mild stimulant including increases in heart rate and blood pressure and worsening anxiety oh boy. in those with anxiety disorder. Oh boy. Dr. Stephen Daniels, chairman of the Academy's Nutrition Committee said Caffeine has no nutritional value. There are no good data on what might be a safe amount for kids. Evidence that even very young children may regularly consume caffeine products raises concerns about possible long-term health. Effects. So parents should try to limit their kids' intake. The authors of the study analyzed national health surveys from 1999 through 2010 involving a total of 22,000 children and young adults from ages 2 to 22. The children or their parents answered questions about what they ate or drank the previous day. In 2010, 10% of daily caffeine came from energy drinks for 19 to 22 year olds. For younger kids, the amount from energy drinks was mostly minimal or none. The average intake in the study was about 60 to 70 milligrams daily. The amount in a six ounce cup of coffee or two sodas. Use of energy drinks increased rapidly during the study, even if they didn't amount to a big portion of kids' caffeine intake. And the rise is a trend researchers are going to keep their eyes on. Soda was the most common source of caffeine throughout the study for older children and teens. For those up to age five, it was the second most common after tea. Soda intake declined for all ages, as many schools stopped selling sugary soft drinks because of obesity concerns. The American Beverage Association, whose members include makers of soft drinks and energy drinks, maintain that caffeine has been safely added to drinks as a flavor enhancer for more than safely. 100 years. Flavor enhancer? Flavor? You know, corporations can do no wrong. Oh, I don't think that is accurate. Flavor enhancer. I think there's another reason. In amounts often found in coffee Addictiveness. And some energy drinks, caffeine can have a pleasant, 
stimulating or alerting effect. Use other th su substances like yerba mate tea or, or lots of green tea. Maureen Beach, a group spokesman said, the study confirmed that kids' consumption of caffeine from soft drinks has decreased. They said that three times during this article. Really? I guess they want us to believe that. Uh, yeah, they yeah repeating the same thing over and over again. It's part of their brainwashing. I don't see how soda intake can decrease whilst energy drink increased. The energy drink the is same thing. It's soda. Is in a soda-like form. Like, let's take Red Bull, for instance, you know. I'm sure it doesn't come out like orange juice. No. It certainly doesn't. Unbelievable. Speaking of obesity. Uh huh. Being a resident of New Jersey myself, I have had made much interest since Superstorm Sandy about where all the aid went. I wonder, wondered, excuse me, why people praised the man who used aid money on a commercial to help New Jersey rather than cutting out that little man. Yeah, he used, used the money to help the, the boardwalk businesses uh, after uh, Storm Sandy, but not the people who lost their homes. I'm talking about New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. It became problematic for residents to request money once Governor Christie came up with an extra two million dollars for a commercial that amounted to 4.7 million in all. Two million dollars for that stupid, annoying commercial. Actually, six point seven, but it is also said that it was twenty-four million. But he had to close food pantries for the homeless, though, in New Jersey. Well, what do you? Shall we give money to the poor and the middle class rather than those who already have? What kind of America would that be? A uh, 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 more compassionate uh, Christian, perhaps. Uh, uh, a more Absolutely. compassionate America, a more uh, uh, America with, with, with more with morality, as the empathy. quintessential conservative Rush Limbaugh said, he has no compassion for the poor. So the poor can perish, as far as he's concerned. Yes, indeed, and do it fast. That that shows you exactly where their their minds are at, but. Hey, the, these people that are uh, um, in, uh, spellbound by the, their cult that makes them vote Republican, they're just going to keep on believing the Fox News lies and uh, Rush Limbaugh's lies and uh, <laughs> the, the whole Republican Party and uh, not realize they're cutting their own throats. Hoboken so far has received only three hundred and forty-two thousand dollars in San Diego. One of the punished uh, cities, supposedly, the, well, the primary one. Governor Christie spent more money on his commercial for saving New Jersey than he did on his own cities of New Jersey. Yeah, the commercial was about making him look good, not helping anybody who needed help. No post Sandy, but to make himself look great. With the George Washington <clears throat> Bridge scandal, Christie has been accused of using threatening tactics on his non-allies by using his allies. Christie's longtime ally, David Sampson, chairman of the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, represents the developer who would have benefited from the Lieutenant Governor's alleged threat 
to Hoboken Mayor Don Zimmer about San Diego. The argument is that if Christie did not know about the lane closures, why not? He has aligned himself with individuals who seem ready to threaten an entire state's well-being. It remains Christie's job to protect New Jersey, not bully those trying to protect it. He uses his allies to put fear in the state's mind, and this must end. There is no stance that anybody could take to protect Governor Christie. Well, he obviously did it to himself, and, uh, you know, hey, karma doesn't forget. Karma comes back to bite you on the ass every time. <laughs> In the case of Chris Christie, that's a very wide bite. Oh, my God. You know? A very wide bite, indeed. Big bite. Uh, every day... We go through pretty much the same rhetoric on Bridgegate. It's time to move on. The press keeps trying to make the governor a national figure, but he is no such thing. Governor Christie is another local Jersey politician with baggage and a bully to boot. Yeah, New Jersey is, has their share of uh, bada bang, bada boom. questionable uh, people with lots of skeletons in their closet. <laughs> Why not stop printing information on polls showing how he stacks up against Hillary Clinton and spend a little time on covering uh, real stories from Washington, such as Obamacare, Benghazi, and the Internal Revenue Service abuse of power? Behold! Be objective! Seek out the truth! The abuse of power. And do not simply repeat what the press is given by the administration and the president. They should abuse their power against the rich and make them pay their fair share in taxes. What do you mean the IRS is an abuse of power? He said IRS? Yes, the three, uh, the three Republican um, scandals that aren't scandals. Benghazi, the Internal Revenue, and Obamacare. Uh, okay? The non-scandal scandals for Daryl Issa and the uh, Republicans. Anything involving a Republican is a real scandal in my book. Yeah, well, believe me, if these things were real scandals, where is uh, Daryl Issa now? He's done nothing on it. Just to hold the hearings to make himself look good. But it didn't turn out that way because they're non-scandals. So what can he do? There's nothing there. You mean the subpoenas have turned up Nothing? What subpoenas? I'm talking about Daryl Issa. Oh, that case. Okay. Jeez, the uh, Congress, the, the, the Washington. Not New Jersey. We're beyond New Jersey, Benghazi and Eternal Revenue and Bob Obamacare. Maybe That's... because I'm not familiar with this. Well, you better be a look Mr. Daryl Issa up. Because he's trying to become something that he's not. And he's trying to use these things as scandals. And they turned out to be non-scandals. So he has been defanged. But yet Fox News keeps say, saying that they're scandals. Well, if they're scandals, let's see the subpoenas, Mr. Issa. Okay? Simple as that. Let's get away from talking about governors, uh, the governors running for president. He's, he's not going to make it. <laughs> he sells well in New Jersey, but not on a national basis. Many people consider Clinton unfit to be president. She played a major role in an incident that revolved, involved the deaths of four Americans in Benghazi. Hey, Chubsy Ubsy. It's a cat. It's one of the mousers here. Yeah, I'm just Mr. Playing Steve. With yeah, the black and white Sylvester looking one. Steve. Steve Vincent. Sylvester. Hey, little Chubsy Ubsy. You want to go out or you just want to say hello? Just say hello.
Oh, I got a deep purr going on there. Little, little cutie. Oh. Prior to Storm Sandy, Superstorm oh, Sandy, he wants to go out. I participated with the city of Hoboken to develop solutions to improve management of stormwater on the block surrounding City Hall. In this context, right, I had the opportunity to meet with Mayor Don Zimmer and her administrative staff and to engage in public discussions about sustainable practices in the city. In all my interactions with her, the mayor set a tone of openness. Cat decided not uh, not to go out, came back in. All right. Continue. Which is informed by a deep concern and passion for the city she leads. When I compare the mayor's integrity with the unfortunate stereotypical image of New Jersey politicians, she is an example of what is needed in our state. Mm -hmm. People who care enough to get involved to change the status quo, which unfortunately includes practices and individuals who do not represent the best New Jersey has to offer, such as Governor Christie. There's no doubt in my mind that her honesty is above reproach and that all she wants is the best possible quality of life for the residents and businesses of Hoboken. Great reading. The flip side to the Bridgegate saga, and maybe Sandy Gate too, is the mystery of the large number of Democratic elected officials who cross the aisle to endorse Governor Christie's re-election. What we were talking about before, sell out Democrats? Blue Dog, with, is, is that an appropriate nickname for them? Blue Dogs? Conservative Democrats? Crapolas, that's what they are. Sellouts, sellouts is okay. what they really are. Sell out Democrats, yeah. With traffic bottlenecked in Fort Lee, Mayor Mark Sokolich refused to do so. And when Hoboken Mayor Don Zimmer was threatened with loss of Sandy aid money, unless she supported a development project favored by Christie, the question becomes, what political price was paid to the unprecedentedly large number of Democrat officials who gave him their support? These Benedict Arnolds, who ran for office as Democrats, backed a party that has advanced a hard-line Republican agenda in such areas as privatization of public assets, tax breaks for large corporations, cuts in social services, attacks on public employees, and weakened environmental regulations. They should be punished at the polls by their constituents. Okay? Absolutely. That doesn't seem to work. Well, it's an opportunity for the uh, Democrats to uh, persist and, and eliminate Chris Christie from uh, the 2016 uh, battle. You know, getting rid of the big windbag, eliminating him will be a feather in their cap. I think he's, he eliminates himself. Well, he is eliminating himself. He is. Would you make up your mind? You want to go out for, for real or you're just playing games? Hmm? You one know thing what? About, Go out for real. One thing about him, he can open the door. Yeah, you, you notice that? His paws are right on the handle. 
<laughs> he he, he did it the other day. He did? Yeah. He, he, he pushed it down and it'll latch and he went out? Yeah. <laughs> See, in the summer, when we have the screen door partially open, they just come in and out on their own. But no such... Uh, Lucky poo. Yeah, no such uh, scenario in, in the winter summer. But, you know, before I let him out and he turned around and came right back in. It's a cat, you know? Personality of the cat. Former presidential candidate, Mike Huckabee. Oh, that, that's your brony? Lobbed a grenade, a big one, into the rumbling dispute about whether the Republican Party had declared a war on women. Yeah. Speaking at the Republican National Committee's meeting in Washington, the former Arkansas governor and Fox commentator teed off on Democrats, who he said to think that women are nothing more than helpless and hopeless creatures whose only goal in life is to have big government provide for them birth control medication. You see how everything leads up to a, a federally funded program, a, 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 a form of a social program for the, for the, for the people. A, a, everything that comes out of their mouth leads into blaming the social program. It's okay to give to governments, I mean the corporations and the wealthy, but never give to the poor or middle class. Well, are, are the Democrats in the House and Senate bringing up this fact about the Republic, about giving corporate welfare? Nobody touches it. What is Nobody it? Is, touches is it. it a taboo subject? Because they all get money from them. So they're, they're all corporate suck-ups. They're all whores. They're all corporate whores. Women I know are smart, educated, intelligent, capable of doing anything anyone else can do. Our party stands for the recognition of the equality of women and the capacity of women. That's not a war on them, that's a war for them. Had he stopped there, his characterization of one facet of Obamacare might have attracted only middling notice, but he didn't stop there. And if the Democrats want to insult the women of America by making them believe that they are helpless without Uncle Sugar coming in and providing for them a prescription each month for birth control because they cannot control their libido, or their reproductive system without the help of the government, then so be it. So the, 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 so the Republican uh, stooges, they have no libido? They, they, they don't... They uh, do not have no libido. Did you hear the statement made by that one um, Republican saying that uh, sex should not be done for pleasure? If you want pleasure... Only for children. If you want pleasure, go read a book or or whatever, you know, it's only for procreation. No, that's correct. That's what he said. It's probably because the old the old geezers are probably Im impotent. Probably. Could be impotent. <laughs> Who knows? But he certainly lacks oxytocin or the ability, ability to become mm, compassionate. Go read a book for pleasure. Uh, uh, reading the book is a type of pleasure, but certainly not like an orgasm. Yeah, I know. That's okay. Why I'm, that's why I'm laughing. Manaj. Within minutes, as his remarks were replayed on cable and the web, that was exactly where the conversation seemed headed. White House press, press Secretary Jay Carney denounced the comment, saying, I haven't seen that report, but whoever said it sounds offensive to me and to women. Certainly the target audience of women who might find his comments offensive is large. 
According to national health statistics, almost all sexually active women have used one contraceptive method and four in five have used birth control pills. Let me ask you a question. All those, um, all those blonde bombshells on Fox News, uh, do they abstain from sex? You know, they all, they're all blondes. You ever notice that? They all have that, that uh, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant uh, image that they're portraying. They don't have sex? I don't know. They don't use contraception? I would hope that down there they had feelings. Well, they don't have emotional feelings and compassion, but I'm sure they have feelings down there. So all these old... But we don't know. So all these old conservative geezers are um, making, making it like, you know, celibacy is like really easy. And uh, just turn yourself off like a light switch. Uh, go read a book or something and... Uh, well, that's because their, their women, their wives, etc. ain't doing it anymore. I think so. They want you to suffer I think, too. I think the old yeah. Well, like yeah, them. yeah. Well, if you got, if you got a Republican for a husband or a boyfriend, I, I don't see a lot of uh, passion going on in the bedroom. They, they're probably boring as all hell. Huckabee's remark was certain to resurrect the very thing he was inveighing against. The notion, fanned by Democrats and Republicans, were engaged in a war on women by virtue of their policies and statements. Democratic National Committee Chairman Debbie Wasserman Schultz said, Republicans would face irrelevance if they did not update their thinking. Mike Huckabee has no idea what he's talking about. If this is the GOP rebrand a year later, then all they've gotten is a year old, she said. Mm -hmm. Women have been integral to the rise of Democrats in key states and since a 2008 national. In 2012, men sided with Republican Mitt Romney by 52% to 45%. Women sided with President Obama, 55% to 44%. What the hell is this 44% voting for Romney for? This aggravates me to no end. Romney? Because these people are, are brain cell deficient uh, red state rednecks. <laughs> they are something. <clears throat> there's, some, there's something that spellbinds them. That, that that draws them into into this uh, world of lies and stupidity and asinine comments. Something is drawing these people in. I, I, I can't believe that they're that stupid that they cannot see how ridiculous a Fox News or, or a Republican statement really is without being based with any fact at all to support it. Well, there's no facts, there's nothing proven about yeah. it. And, and it sounds downright idiotic. But these people are, are, are just spellbound by them. We know darkness because of light. If you don't get a contrasting view for, from Fox, you're never going to learn the truth. Aren't, aren't, um, a lot of red aren't many red states uh, amongst the poorest in the nation well don't they see that their standard of living is not good so why on earth would they vote for a Republican if if their states are so damn poor Democrats are baby killers secular humanists atheists they are godless it's cult so they are they are controlled by their religious cult not by what's best for them but by this cult. 
that is not based on the God of the Bible, you know, the and cult. and they wouldn't know a, a, a conservative would not would not know a Bible scripture from reading Dr. Seuss. Also, they do not understand that what they do helps those who have. They're they're only making the haves richer. Exactly. And they're taking and we money out of the mouths of their children. Correct. Their poor children are becoming more destitute and going and becoming more hungry. They're becoming more poor as a family. Giving this money to the rich, making the rich richer, and they're they're not and they're too blind to see what they're doing. And they continue to reelect these Republicans in their poor state. That's why their poor state remains poor. But don't they have the common sense to see what they're doing? Like, don't they sit at they home and say, the "Why people in Jonestown have the common sense not to drink the Kool-Aid?" Oh, I got you now. But they drank it anyway, didn't they? And what about the idiots of uh, following uh, Marshall Applewhite's Heaven's Gate, who committed suicide, listening to the nut? Marshall the Apple. Chips are coming. We have to They're wear coming. white. We have to wear white sneakers for the rapture. The the uh, flying sources are going to pick us up. Oh, excuse me. My eyes are bothering. Yeah. So it's like these people absurdly follow these insane cult leaders. What about David Koresh? All right. That other idiot of Waco, Texas. Remember. What was the name so of his stupid ones. church, a Branch Davidian or something? There are so many others who have not been unveiled. Uh-huh. You know, that goes on all the time. Ugh. Unmarried women, those more likely to be using birth control, provided Obama's largest advantage, with more than two-thirds of them siding with the Democrats. National Republicans, in a post-election report issued last spring named women as one of the most important voter groups for the GOP to attract if it wished to succeed in future national elections. I think maybe that's why they have a lot of, they hired a lot of women on Fox News. Well they don't hire them for their ideas, per se, their policies. Maybe these per women. Se. Maybe these women are scripted. Maybe they're told to say these things. Every person on Fox gets talking points every morning on which their show must be built around. So they. So everyone so, is scripted. So they do not talk from the heart. They do not speak from the heart if they're hired by Fox News. If they spoke from the heart, Mr. Ailes would have them out in the street in a second. Okay, I understand okay. that. But the report did not advocate any changes in the GOP's positions on issues like birth control, abortion, or same-sex marriage, which have turned off many voters. The GOP wants to attract women, but they don't want to do anything, any policies, for women. They also insult women all the time. Yes, they do. So they're they're like trying to, it's like trying to attract um, bees, because it's all bees about, with, with vinegar. It's all about winning. It's not about governing for them. They are not there to govern. Well, uh, speaking from a common sense standpoint, <coughs> women, women, uh, young people, um, Minorities, people of color, uh, the poor, and the the, the uh, elderly and the disabled. A Republican voting for a Republican does not at all have their best interests at whatsoever. They're they're they they're, they are not going to receive anything from a Republican, nothing. But Exxon Mobil will. Yes, yes. The rich will, the corporations will, the elitists will, mm -hmm. but not the people I just mentioned. Uh, not even the middle class who, who 
are carrying the tax burden and who uh, express their displeasure for carrying the tax burden quite often they they do get angry about it and you know and scream about it and the property taxes and the income taxes so the proof is in the pudding so if you know that a Republican does not have your best interests why vote for him and Dr. Bill said before he made a statement that it's because the um, liberals are demonized because mm -hmm. of abortion and uh, which goes back to this religious cult that is not biblical because it doesn't say anything in the Bible about the beginning of life starting as a fertilized egg or an embryo that breeds like a fish it actually says life begins when the first breath is taken well that's what it was with Adam because Adam was yeah created as a man he did not go through the baby period or the growth period or the embryo period or the fetus period but there's no proof and what animated him yeah was the breath of God right now now all the things all the anti all the gay bashing that Republicans do and and if they tie it into the Bible they're, what they're talking about is the Old Testament that was meant for the ancient Israelites like if you do this, stone her, stone her to death. If you do that, you must execute this person. If they, if they, if they're caught working on the Sabbath, kill them. If they're caught, if they're gay, if they're caught being a homosexual, execute them. Kill this one. Kill that one. Right? All that Old Testament stuff was for the ancient Israelites, which so ended, they wouldn't become contaminated. Right. Which, of course, humans, man, could not keep the law. So then after Jesus Christ was uh, killed and, and resurrected, <coughs> then it became totally different. The grace period. Well, it's not that it's totally different. I said ancient Israel was supposed to be an example to the rest of the nations in the world. It could not be an example if it ended up doing the same damn things that the other nations were doing. Right, so they had to set the example. And the only way to do that was to get rid of those bad people, get them out of the, uh, uh, today. And that's why Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed because, not because of homosexuality per se. Right. But because in the old days, if you went out on a journey... Right. And you happen to stop at a house. Right. Those people would invite you in. They would feed you. They would water you. See you on your way. Wasn't like that in Sodom and Gomorrah anymore. They were just out for themselves. Sounds like Republicans. <laughs> <laughs> so basically that's why they were destroyed. Because Lot pleaded with God. God, if there's if there's ten people, good people in there, please don't destroy the city. All right, if there's ten good people in there, I won't destroy the city. Allah. But God, if there's five, if there's five, please don't destroy. All right, if there's five, I ain't going to destroy the city. But if there's two, stop it! There's not two. Lot sounds like a pain in the ass. Okay. But he was trying to, you know, help his fellow humans. I would have said, then get the hell out of Sodom and Gomorrah. He had to get out. And leave. He did. I would have got pissed and says, yeah, but yeah, but you're driving me nuts a lot. Get, get out of get out of here. Go leave, leave. God told him to get out. Take your family and leave. He and his wife, they left. The wife was told not to turn back. Do not turn back and look at the city, which was going to be destroyed by the fire and brimstone. So she pulled an Adam and Eve and she disobeyed. She turned around. She and became a pillar of salt. Right. Well, well, I mean, she she pulled at Adam and Eve, whereas disobeyed well, that's, God's command. Yeah. So, but the point is that uh, <sighs> they have the, today these these people have made that a homosexual thing, but it right. wasn't a homosexual thing. It was a it was a thing of uh, the people no longer had any empathy, compassion. Two Timothy. Two Timothy three. And conservatives and Tea Party Republicans, the same thing. Corporations, 
It's all happening, man. It's all happening. Two Timothy. Well, the three whole, through fourteen. Or three something. to fourteen, something like three that. Well, I have it posted on the yeah. <coughs> Progressive Whatever. Discussions Facebook page. But anyway, it's just like they've lost their humanity. Right. When you're out for yourself, you no longer have any humanity. Well, it's just, you're out for numero uno. It's like it's capitalism. It's like the devil's economics. Capitalism is self-interest. You know the the uh, the way Ayn Rand thought, uh, Milton Friedman, and all these people. Alan Greenspan. It all, Alan Greenspan. It all falls into. Uh, it, it's nothing new. It, it, it Nothing new is under the sun. I mean, Sodom and Gomorrah, Sodom and Gomorrah had the same way of thinking, and in the end times, the conservatives uh, have the same way of thinking also. You know, and uh, some of your Democrats are obviously not progressive liberal. We have time for one more? I what? do not think so. So we're done. I do think so. So it is, according to the uh, the shadow on the sundial, uh -huh. we are finished. Okay, therefore we are finished. Finito. Yes. Thank you for joining us for this week's Progressive Discussions, the post St. Valentine's Day massacre on our wallets, and we will see you next time. Uh, they say that the temperature here in New Jersey, northern New Jersey, will get into the 50s this coming week. This week, yeah. Which is... I think we have tonight and tomorrow, and then Tuesday begins in the 40s. Which means... A great Melting! A great, That's what it means. A great deal of the snow will melt. Because we need our parking spaces back. Yeah, yeah. Of course, and I'm, I'm sick and tired of shoveling. My, my yeah. lower back thanks you, uh, <laughs> weather. <laughs> you know, uh, I know, you know, uh, uh, well, March is, um, uh, the first day of spring is March 21st, I believe. Something like or that. Or 22nd. All the, right. The, what is that, the vernal equinox? The vernal equinox is the, the changing of the seasons. The, uh. Spring. The day that the seasons go from um, from winter to spring, then from spring to summer, and so on and so forth. From yeah, I su think we summer have, to autumn. I think we have added two hours of daylight right now. Yeah, to, well, to it, the day. It's spring. For it's spring forward and fall, fall back, back, which means we will lose. We will lose an hour. I need that an hour. sleep. We will lose an hour's sleep. I hate daylight savings time. I thought I was going to sneeze before, but it went away. Something's making me, uh, something's giving me a little mild hay fever. I don't know why, all of a sudden. Anyway, we'll see you next time. You look very good in, 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 in deep red, burgundy, burgundy red. red yeah. Yes, yes, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman is in Bur um, So say so long to these jabronis. So long, people.